Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA Physical Science class and the portfolio that you'll be working on for this day is going to be the Unit 2 Lesson 6 portfolio on potential and kinetic energy. Um, you are going to be constructing a roller coaster, kind of a miniature one here, and I'm going to walk you through the construction because what I have is going to be kind of a tabletop version of what the portfolio asks you to construct. Um, you certainly can go ahead and build what is given to you as um, kind of the directions within the portfolio. However, I don't know, I don't have a giant piece of cardboard. So you might not have a giant piece of cardboard. So if you don't have a giant piece of cardboard, this one might be the portfolio design for you. All right, so we're looking at force, kinetic, and potential energy. These are um, gravitational kinetic and potential energy and resistance are keywords. Um, in terms of what do you need to do? Um, directions and rubric. Um, I guess that's what we click on. And that's going to bring up this PDF, which by the way, as we've been saying since the beginning of the school year, you will need to download and save as to your computer change the name of the file, um, preferably to something with your name in it, which helps me to remember whose is whose, but um, make sure you save it to your computer, then reopen it before you modify it and save it again. That way, when you put it in the Dropbox, it's got stuff in it. Otherwise, it ends up blank, and that's not good for you because that means you have to redo it again. So you'll see every one of these guys are clickable. This one is asking you to make a really big um, portfolio, portfolio, roller coaster, and to use a tennis ball as what's going to run down the roller coaster track. The one I'm building is smaller so that you can just use a kind of a larger size marble to roll down the track. So it's going to be kind of a, a scaled version of what's in there. Okay. And then we're going to have to do like a little modification with the math because they're giving you some information for that particular, um, roller coaster. So let's see here. <clears throat> um, we'll come back to this after we're done building. So I'm going to make the screen bigger and then we're going to zoom down to my desk, which shows you my very ugly and dirty keyboard. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Maybe kind of getting some cords in the way here. So hang on a sec. Here we go. Then I'm using a file folder. I'm going to flip this around so you can kind of see from my perspective. It's a pretty file folder. You have, you might not have a pretty file folder at home. You might not even have a file folder. So if you don't have a file folder, then I would recommend just getting two pieces of like cardstock, you know, the thicker paper. Um, and just putting them together, stacking them together. File folder is nice because it's already done for you. And it's just pretty. That's why I wanted to use this one. So what I would do first is I would use a Sharpie. I will take from my beautiful Rome rainbow display of Sharpies on my desk. Of course, this is not a peacock, by the way. This is a beaker. I know it looks a lot like a cup you get at the hospital or whatever if you're given a sample, but it's not what that is. It's a beaker. So in any case, when you're drawing this, um, I believe you're supposed to have um, two, two hills and two valleys. I just want to double check on that one real quick, okay? So let's just flip that back up here. Um, let's see. Yes, so first valley, first hill, second valley, second hill. All right, so basically you'll have your starting spot, and then you'll have a valley, and then you'll have a hill, and a valley, and then a hill, and then it ends. So one thing that's true about a roller coaster is that every hill has to be shorter than the hill before because the maximum amount of energy that the roller coaster has is at the top of the first hill. From there, the kinetic energy is constantly going to be 
decreasing. Well, excuse me, the potential energy is decreasing. And then, you know, you get a little bit of like a momentum that brings it back up and you get a little more kinetic energy, less potential, and then it decreases again, potential energy. So potential energy just keeps decreasing as you fall down. It's not going to, you're never going to end up with more energy than you started with because that would violate that lovely fundamental first law of, um, well, thermodynamics, right? Or whatever. Law of conservation of energy. So they're all the same. Law of conservation of momentum, law of conservation of energy, law of conservation of mass. They all kind of relate to one another. So I'm going to start, I'm going to like cut this little piece off here, this little tab at the top. I don't really need it. So I'm just going to get rid of that so mine's nice and rectangular. And I'm going to start <laughs> at the top of the first tail. And the other thing you got to be careful is if it make it too steep, what ends up happening is that your ball will fall off the track. So I've had that problem before. So we may have to kind of modify this a little bit. So let's see. Um, I'm trying to make sure I have enough. Hmm. So I think I will stop it right here. That's my first part. And get a ruler out here to make sure I can draw a straight line, right? Okay. And then, so that's my first one. There's my valley. And then it's going to go back up. My second hill I'm going to make right the top right there. This is a pretty unexciting roller coaster right now. So you can make it better, more thrilling if you will with uh, steeper hills and stuff like that but I just have learned from experience that that actually can not be successful but we'll see I mean if I try this and put it all together and the ball flies off I'm gonna have to do some adjusting so um, so it's gonna come up to here hmm you finding the problem I'm finding I thought you were I think I made them a little too wide. I gotta be more careful here. Okay, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here, guys. I've done one of these already, but I tried to store it <laughs> from last year and it got all smashed. <laughs> so, what I'll do is I'll use this as a kind of a template. You guys will just have to play with your, oh, biscuits. You guys will just have to play with it. I just ripped it apart. Have to play with yours until you get the correct. Um, I just accidentally ripped it there, but that's okay. Until you get the correct dimensions. Okay. So we're just going to use this as a template for now. I do know this works, so. Um, my low point is down here. And then. You can see how well put together this thing was. I'm using like name tags, right? This isn't crafts. This isn't arts and crafts. Science people. Okay. Whatever. I gotta get in there and kind of mark that spot, but it's gonna be like there, which is basically here-ish, right? Good enough. We'll figure this one out. Low spot. It's gonna swoop up to here. There. Beautiful. So now, I'm going to cut this out. I think I may have to make two videos out of this one, people. Because um, it is kind of like arts and crafts, even though it's really not my forte. Okay. Just zoom out a little bit. I will give you some advice in terms of how to take the directions that they use. And maybe use that to help you determine your actual measurements. I did a little trial and error. I just kept kind of playing with it until it worked. So, because a lot of it does depend on the mass of the ball, even you know, and what the material the ball is made out of. So, okay, I got this. Now it's connected at the bottom, which I don't want. So I'm just going to cut that right down the middle. Wish I had one of those fancy like editors. You know, you see those things. On, I know I see these little videos on Facebook sometimes 
They're just awesome. They show you how to make these cute little crafts out of things. And I'm like, whoa, she made Barbie dolls out of a balloon. Barbie doll, not Barbie dolls, but Barbie doll clothing. I was like, what? I could never do that for one. But the other part of it is that literally the editing makes it look like beautiful and perfect and it she never made a mistake. And I doubt that's real. So, all right. So we got two pieces here and we're going to have to put these together. And the idea is, is that we are going to separate them um, by a distance greater than the distance of the ball, but not a whole bunch because we don't want that thing rocking back and forth. We really just want it to be funneled. We also don't want to put the track right on the edge here. We want to put it down just a little bit so there's a railing, okay? So I'm going to pause, do a little bit of like impromptu video editing, and then we'll come back with this thing put together and kind of give you a little walkthrough about what I did. All right, so I just wanted to give you a little update on the progress here. I wanted to also give you a little bit of a tip. So what I've done so far is I put, um, you know, both of these pieces together and I used some other cardstock. I actually used some um, certificates that I had and I cut them just a little wider than I wanted them to be. And then I folded the edges and taped them on the edges, both on the, the bottom and the ends <clears throat> so that the thing can stand up pretty well. And then I did the same thing for the inside of the track. You can see that. Did the same thing in there, folded them a little bit, or made them cut them a little wider and then folded them. But the, here's the deal when you get to the curves, that's a bit harder because those are not straight. They're um, curved, obviously. So, the best thing that I found is that if I can take my scissors and make just a couple of little cuts, kind of not all the way through, but about, you know, ah, booger, a couple of, you know, I don't know, just a little bit of the way through there. <clears throat> and do that on both sides. That then you can get it to fold over. Um, in this case, it's the top of the curve. It's a little bit harder. So I'm just going to fold it like, kind of like that, I guess. Kind of use them as tabs to fold it over. <clears throat> and then what I will have to do, that's the outside curve versus down here, which was the inside curve. And in this case, this, the little things that I cut just only allowed me to bend it. What I'll have to do then is my next piece that I cut is going to have to overlap this one a little bit so that I can get kind of a nice smooth top of the hill here. I'm gonna actually cut this just a little bit as well. Just so the thing doesn't, I don't want it to bend. I want it to curve rather than bend. So that's kind of the goal is to get this thing to kind of make a nice smooth curve on the top and not a bend. Yeah. And it's kind of doing that. There we go. <laughs> as I bend it, but okay, that part's gonna get covered up. So. In any case, that's the progress so far. So I will continue to work on this and show you the completed product in just a minute. Okay, so this proved to be a kind of a bigger pain than I expected it to be. But essentially, when you're done, you should be finished with something that looks like this, except I didn't actually finish the end of this because um, I ran out of time. But then you're gonna use your marble and that marble you can drop down the first run and it should roll all the way down and up over the second hill and then up the last one. So if it doesn't do that, if you're finding that it gets to the top here and then it rolls back down, or alternately, it gets to the top here and just flies off, then you gotta make some adjustments. If it gets to the top here and rolls back down, it's too steep, your second hill, which is what happened to me, by the way. I had to chop off the second hill. Um, if it gets to the top and flies off, it's not steep enough in which case you might just want to lower the first hill a little bit because you can't really add more here. It would be really awkward, but you could kind of chop this guy off up here a little bit. Okay. So that's construction phase. Next phase is going to be measurements and calculations, and that'll be on video two. Okay. So um, this will be the end of video one. Check out video two for how to actually do the experiment and, um, do all the calculations that are associated with it.